Hey guys, it's me, Nez. Uh, it's been long. I've come on here to show my face. But um, I just want to come and have a little Bible study, I guess. Um, but we're going to talk about something that is really interesting. And it's going to make us think about how we build. You know, there's a lot of um, illustrations of building in the word and materials that we should build with, okay? But let's go through those and like figure out which, what is what, which is which, what's good, what's not. Um, okay, let's first go to Matthew chapter seven, starting from verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. This is Jesus speaking. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell and great was the fall of it. Okay. So now, even prior to that um, verse, it talks about Jesus saying, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So in that passage with the building of the home ver on sand versus um, on the rock, it was, If you say, hear my sayings and do them, you'll be likened unto the wise man who built his house on the rock. But if you don't, if you hear my sayings and you don't do them, you'll be likened on, as unto the man that built his house on the sand. Okay, so what is the saying? What is, you know, saying the words of Jesus, the, you know, the word, the will of God. So now it, in verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will, doeth the will, okay, do what he says, his commands, so doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, many, so not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, but them that doeth the will of my Father in heaven, and in other um, videos, I've established that the will of the Father was that we believe on the one he sent, which is Jesus Christ. So his will is to believe the gospel. So let's put it in context. So the person, the wise man is the one that believed the gospel of Jesus Christ and built his house on the rock, which is Jesus. Jesus is the rock. He's our rock of salvation. So those who hear the gospel and don't obey it, which is to believe it, they're building their homes on sand, sinking sand. So at the end of you know all the things they build in their life and they're not built on jesus they're, they don't have jesus as their savior right okay and anything in life that they do um whether good or bad it, it doesn't mean anything because you don't have eternal life you don't have the rock your house will come tumbling down right just like the pigs the three little pigs that <laughs> The first two were just not wise. They were foolish. And the big bad wolf blew their house down, okay? The wolf of the storms, the, you know, the floods that come in life. And, um, yeah, in life, right? So without Jesus, you know, the house is coming, tum is tumbling down, okay? So we need to build our house on him. And first, he needs to be the foundation, he needs to be your rock. You need to believe the gospel. Okay, so so now we've established that. So it's better to build on the rock. It's better to believe. Okay, now let's go to First Peter, chapter two, verse two. Okay, okay. So it says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be taste have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So, 
as newborn babies desire, so you have to desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. Okay, you know, so if you've tasted that the Lord is gracious, grow by the milk of his word. That's so important, so key. We need to ingest his word. We need to imbibe it because that's, you know, he is the word. So you need to know him through his word. Okay. And that's how you grow. You grow in the knowledge of, of Christ. And that's, that's how you grow. And this growth process, it's also a building. That's how you're built up. Okay. Okay. So now in verse four, to whom coming as onto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Okay. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, an holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And I'm reading another translation for understanding. So it says, as you come to him, to God, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious. Okay, so you are a living stone, precious to God. You were chosen right from, you know, God. He's outside of time and space. He really he chose you from the, before you ever were. He knew you. He chose you in your mother's womb before you ever came to be. He already had so many things lined up for you. You were destined, predestined to be in Christ, to be in, yeah, to, to know God, right? And that's his will for you, to know him, okay? So you, but, you know, he chose you. He pulled you out of the kingdom of darkness, right? So, and he's, you were, and he's describing you as precious, one chosen of God, precious. You are lively stones. You're living, right? You're a living sacrifice, living stone. And lively stones, or living stones, being built up a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Okay. So the world rejects us. All right. The world will reject us because we believe. As when you're a believer, you are rejected by men. But you are chosen by God and you're precious to him. That's what the word is saying. And he's building you up. You are living stones being built up as a spiritual house. So that's enough. That's building. God is building you up. As a spiritual house, like a, you are the temple of God. You are his temple. He's building, you're being built up as the temple, the abode of God. You are, but this is in, you're being built up so that you may know who you are. You know, if you know who you are, Things won't defy you. He's going to talk about it. He's going to talk about it. So offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. So he is building you up so that you may, your life will be offered onto him. Spiritual, there'll be spiritual sacrifices acceptable, as spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. You know, he is making you a priest, you know, and priests have direct access to God, the, to the most high. So we are pre kings and priests, right? So what we offer the Lord in worship, in adoration, with our lives, you know, all that we are, we're offering, we're being offered up as spiritual sacrifices is acceptable to God through, through Jesus Christ. The only way these things are acceptable to God is not by our, in and of ourselves that we're doing this or through our flesh. It is through Jesus Christ that we as priests offer up acceptable sacrifices to the father to god so now it says in verse six for um it stands in scripture wherefore also it is contained in the scripture behold i lay in zion a chief cornerstone elect precious and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded and that's jesus right unto you therefore which believe he is precious um he is precious right but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which so to those that believe God is God is our all. I mean, He is precious. He is 
treasure. So, it's for those who believe, but unto them which be disobedient or who don't believe. Disobedience here is un the unbelieving. The stone which the builders disallowed or rejected, right? The same is made the head of the corner and the stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So, so Jesus is, they rejected Jesus. So he's the stone that the builders rejected, okay, and have become the cornerstone because he is a chief cornerstone. But when you don't know God, you don't believe him, he becomes a rock, a stone of stumbling. You stumble over him. You can't, he's just an offense. And he says also a rock of offense. Jesus is offensive to you if you don't believe. If you disobey the word, and they said as they were destined to, you know, we were predestined to know. He just, because that's his foreknowledge, he knows who is his right before they even were his. So he knows those who, who would, would reject him, right? And so those who reject, they're, Jesus is offensive to them. Even the religious, they don't trust him. They don't believe his word. Those who say, Lord, Lord, we did this and that in your name, but they didn't trust him. They didn't know him. God said, depart from me, for I never knew you, workers of iniquity. Their iniquity was on their account because they didn't trust the blood of Jesus. To save them, to keep them saved, they had to do something in their own flesh, with their own strength. They, they wanted to add to the gospel like no i have to do this and that to earn salvation to look acceptable to god and god's like no it's my son he's the only one you can offer to me that i will accept he's the only spiritual sacrifice that i look upon and i'm pleased it's a sweet aroma so anything we must exude christ only christ we can only offer christ not our own blood not our own works only christ okay so these the disobedient are the unbelieving so it says but ye you, the believer, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, peculiar, peculiar, peculiar right? Unusual, unique, <laughs> um, different, strange. We're peculiar, right? We're weird, but in a good way. You know, people don't get us. People don't understand. Wow, you just believe and that's it. You just have faith and that's it. And you're what? Holy? You're pure? No, I still see sin in your life. Oh, you can't. You can't be saying I believe in it because I don't. I don't see. I don't see. I don't see it. No, I just rest in Jesus, and <laughs> he he cleans me up. He he presents me to the Father without spot, without blemish. I live a life by faith. I live this Christian life by faith. It's strange, right? Peculiar, right? But that's what it is, right? That's what it is. I am a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. I'm a peculiar person. And that ye should show forth the praises of him. So say, you are these things. Your chosen generation, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him. Him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So my life, it's just to proclaim the praises of him. That's my spiritual sacrifice, my thanksgiving. I just said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for calling me out of darkness into your marvelous light, which in time says, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So this we our life is a testimony. We bear the testimony of Jesus Christ. And 
And what is that testimony? He saved me. He saved me. He died for my sins. He purged me. I no longer am a sinner in his sight. In the Father, to the Father, he sees the Son in me. He sees Christ in me. The hope of glory. So, and my, what, what I'm here for, my purpose, because of who I am, my identity, is to show forth the praises of him. It's just, it's, it's, it's in the gospel. He died for my sins. Guys, look. He died for my sins. And now, I am holy. I am a son of light. I am not a son of darkness. I am not part of those who are disobedient. The sons of disobedience who didn't believe. I am the sons of obedience who believe, who obey the truth, the word, the gospel. I am in his marvelous light. I was, was not a son of God or, a, or you know, but now I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm in the family of God now. I'm a son. I'm an heir. He so said, we are the people of God. I didn't have mercy before, but in Christ, I've obtained mercy. And boy, do I need it. I obtained grace upon grace upon grace. Grace that covers my sin. That purges it, takes it away. Hallelujah. So, that, you know, so that is, this is, this is what, this is what, He's building in us. We are the spiritual house being built up. We're his temple and we also his priest. We are the priest. We are a royal priesthood. We are royalty and a priest. And we offer up spiritual sacrifices to the father of thanksgiving, declaring his praises of what Jesus did for us in our lives. He gave us eternal life. Amen. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Starting from verse 5, let's begin. Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? Okay. So they were assigned, you know, um, the Lord assigned, assigned these roles of being ministers of the word onto them. So we, all, we have our different purposes in... Um, God's uh, grand design of his building of um, this us as spiritual houses, his, the building of the body of Christ, um, the watering and planting of his field. We have assigned roles, you know, for in that process, um, you know, of ministry. So we all have our assigned role. So if you don't know what it is, you know, Wait on him. He will reveal it to you, you know, so because he's going to assign you because you are a worker in his field. Believe it or not. I mean, you can choose not to work in his field and be a part of this marvelous um, building process. But we're all assigned, you know, a role. So he, Paul is saying, I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So we do all different roles, but God is giving the increase. He is, he is the one building, growing us together as the body of Christ. Okay. And even in the field, being the world in that scope, you know, the wheat and the tares, that, that, um, parable, the field is the world. So he, God has planted, he has watered. So he's going to reap his wheat from the field of the world from the world he's going to reap his people the people of god and the tares are the the ones that the enemy the enemy has planted bad seed you know bad fruit so he will at the time of the harvest those will be revealed okay and uh, you know they're going to show themselves the seed was the word. These false people who are preaching false gospels, false prophets, all the falsities are going to be revealed. God's going to, the time of harvest, which, you know, because he is going to come 
you know, the harvester is going to come and harvest. And so the wheat is at the time of harvest is very clear that, wow, this is a tear. I didn't know you, you wouldn't know before the time of harvest, but at the time of harvest, they become blaringly it's evident that you are a tear. You never believed because what's spewing out of your mouth is just false, 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 and false. So they're going to be bundled up and burnt. They're going to be gathered. So they're going to show themselves. So God is the one who will give the increase. So the wheat will be beautiful and grown and rich. You know, those who believed. Okay. So now, so ni then verse seven. So then neither is he that planted anything neither he that watereth but god that giveth the increase so those even the workers like what we do in god's field um or in his in the in ministry you know as co-laborers in um ministering to the saints and um planting and watering you know working in the field of the world it's not we have we are insignificant in regards to um, like we water, we, we plant, we water. Planting is just like you know, sharing the word, sharing the gospel. We water, we just you know, disciple, um, encourage all those things that you help your bro fellow brother and sister, um, in the faith, right? In you know, um, in yeah, to help them to edify in all those edifying you do to one for one another. All that doesn't have any value if it's not for Christ. So he is the one that causes the planting and causes the watering and he gives the increase. So he's he is involved in every single aspect of the process. Okay. So when I'm not anything, you're not anything, if it's not for Christ, if Christ is not involved. Okay, so verse 8, now he that planted and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So we'll be rewarded for how we participated or partnered with God in the building of the body of Christ. Okay, and his work in his, in his work done in the world to reap you know, harvest, the harvest of souls, right? I mean, that's what he's doing in this day and age. He is reaping souls into his kingdom, pulling them out of darkness, right? So we should partner with him by sp spreading the gospel. It's through the gospel. That's how we partner with him in that. So for we are laborers together with God. So it's telling us we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, or in another translation, ye are, you are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. So husbandry is the field. You are God's field and you are God's building. So you are the building. You are the temple. You are the building of God. He is building you up. So according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise Master builder, I have laid the foundation and another build thereon. So we're working all together to build upon what is the foundation? Christ. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So he is the foundation. You know, so we have to remember that he is the foundation. You can't build upon any other ground because he's a rock. It's not wise to build on the sand, right? So he is the foundation. And now he's Paul is telling us, be careful how you build on him. Be careful how you build on Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, Christ, you know, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. So he's saying these are the materials that any man can build upon him, but which one's better to build with, right? So every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Okay, so 
If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire. Okay, so it's better to build with what? Gold, uh, silver, precious stones instead of wood, hay, and stubble. Okay, you know, because wood, hay, and stubble obviously burn up in fire. But gold, precious stones, and silver, as they go through fire, they're even ref they're refined. They 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 glow brighter and um, become pure, more pure in that fire. Okay, so now, you know, there was a song that was I was singing. You know, I don't wanna build with wood, hay, or stubble. Wood, hay, or stubble. Wood, hay, or stubble. No, no, I don't wanna build with wood, hay, or stubble. Wood, hay, or stubble. Wood, hay, or stubble. No, I want to build with gold, silver, precious stones, gold, silver, precious stones, gold, silver, precious stones. I want to build with gold, silver, precious stones, gold, silver, precious stones, gold, silver, precious stones. That is the material I want to build. So what does that constitute? Now, I thought about this. And um, I just thought about every, everything in scripture that talks, that speaks of what's burnt up, what is corrupt, <laughs> what is incorruptible. Now, the only thing I can think of that's incorruptible is Jesus Christ. So all those materials, gold, gold, I mean, these are things that pertain to royalty, pertain to um, a king. You know, he is all of that. Jesus Christ. So these materials are his, the substance is Christ. These materials, the substance of these materials is Christ. That's the only thing that can stand the fire, which is the presence. You know, remember the consuming fire, the burning bush. He said, Moses, take off your, your, um, your slippers because you're, you're standing on holy ground. It's the holiness, the right, the, the, the holy presence of God. It's like he's a consuming fire. So what can stand that except God himself? Nobody can stand that. Not even the angels. You know, you can just with all his glory, with the, the brightness of you know, the brightness of his coming. When Jesus comes, the brightness of his coming, our, our flesh will be changed. It'll be transformed. It'll be, we'll be transfigured. This flesh is corrupt. So it can't pass through the fire. It can't come into the presence of God. It must be changed. So when we are, when he comes with the brightness of his coming, right? The glory, right? Everything dead, everything corrupt, everything having to do with the flesh is going to burn up. So the wood, hay, and stubble have to do with that, right? It has to be. Those things that are corrupt, perishable, those will burn up. Perishable items. And it talks about our flesh, the works of, our, of the flesh, you know, the, the the works of our hands that is done um, by that old man, by that flesh, it's going to burn up. So it's the, the things that are done in the spirit, by the spirit of the living God, are the precious stones, the gold, the, the silver. And it's because it's being done by Christ in you. So pretty much this building process has to be done by Christ. He is the one who plants, who waters, who builds. And the stones he uses, the I mean the material he uses, it's himself, is the substance is him. So he's the focus. He you have to you can't take him out of the picture. Don't put yourself in the picture in trying to build, trying to serve. It's it's him. It's him. And you, and make no mistake that this building, you you are part of that, you you are the one that he builds first. You're being built up a spiritual house. So when you are resting in him, abiding in him, and you, you know, you take, you heed his words, you, you know, and you, you, as the more you hear his word, the more you know him, the knowledge of Christ increases. You get to know God. The more he'll manifest in you, the more you, you're allowing him to work through you. Okay. And in doing that, He's the one you're allowing him to build with the proper materials, which is himself. 
So you need to allow God, allow God to build you and to build through you to edify the body of Christ, period. Okay. So it now says, um, ye, okay. Yeah. So that, that's what I wanted to bring out. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you can keep that picture in mind, um, that Christ is the materials of gold, silver, and precious stones. You're, you ain't going to go anywhere but to him to help you build. I mean, you because he, he is a master builder. So let him build. Don't do it yourself. Okay. All right. So let's go on with um, verse 16. Uh, yeah. Okay. But let me mention the yeah. So So when you allow him build, you're going to get rewarded for that. Right. You'll, those things will be rewarded because they'll pass through the fire. Okay. The other ones, those who build with wood, hay, or stubble, those works are going to burn up. Okay, as by fire. You're going to be coming out of there um, chiseled and charred. But you're saved. <laughs> he said, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So isn't this not about a salvation or losing salvation or being consumed by hellfire? No. So it's about what we did in this life. Um, the works that were done. The works ordained for us to walk in. So this is about just, uh, you know, waiting upon God and having him assign what you should do. You know, when he says, when you move up, when, when I move, you move just like that, you know, <laughs> sorry, you know, when you move, I move just like that. When you move, I move just like that. When you move, I move just like that. Hey, DJ, bring that back. So it's like, Lord, I don't want to move unless you move. I mean, that's what Moses, I was like, Lord, that pillar of fire that um, you, we ain't going to move if you don't move. And that makes sense. That makes sense. You know, you know, so, but the song is actually, when I move, you move just like that. So God is like, when I move, you move. It'd be like that. <laughs> so now verse 16, know ye not that. Ye are the temple of God. I've mentioned this before. And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. When you look at this verse, it's like, oh, God, you're going to destroy me if I defile the temple? Oh, my God. You know, it's like, no, no. He's not, it's not talking about you being destroyed. Of course, you are the temple of God. You can't be the temple of God if the spirit of God doesn't dwell in you. And the spirit of, the spirit of God doesn't dwell in you if you don't believe the gospel. So, he is not going to destroy you, but the things that maybe you brought in into your life that defile you, sometimes it's about sin. It could be sin, some things, you know, because, you know, you're a temple of God. You can't be, you're one spirit with God. Don't be joining yourself with a prostitute or whatever. And even that could even be religious prostitution, spiritual, you know, matters. So it, you could you'd be prostituting with the false um doctrine or false gospel or false uh false um teaching yeah false teachings yeah don't don't that that's defile that defiles you that defiles you because how you started by faith that's where you should end don't add anything to that okay so and the the faithfulness of god is those things that you brought into the temple um you know, your mind, you know, the things you meditate on and everything. God's going to destroy those things. So you're going to be destroyed. It's going to hurt you because, you know, these things of the flesh are pleasurable. And if you take away the, those things, your flesh is screaming out in pain. But, you know, th that's you reckoning that. Like, no, no, no. Lord, deal with that, my flesh. Deal with it. Deal with it. And it must stay down. And it may hurt, right? It, it stings, you know. But those things are being destroyed. He will destroy those things in your life. Praise God. So he will destroy them. Not you being destroyed. Your spirit is incorruptible and, you know, eternal, right? You know, because you have eternal life. 
have the Holy Spirit that's joined with your spirit. So that can definitely not be destroyed. So it's the things of the flesh, pertaining to the flesh, you know, because you are the temple of God. So in verse 18, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. You know, let's not lift up man above God and man's wisdom above God's wisdom. Okay. For all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's and Christ is God's. You see, all this is, you know, there's, it's, it's saying there's so much. that we have don't get carried away with doctrines of men with esteeming men esteeming yourself because you are a man don't esteem yourself it's about jesus it's about god and who you are in him do you know that you are an, a co-heir with jesus christ do you know that you are an inheritor of the his riches and glory right do you know that because you have Christ and you believed him and Christ is in you, 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 all the things that are his are yours. And you are Christ and he is, he is God's and it's, you know, you just have, you have everything. You have everything that is good. Everything that is joyful, everything that is peaceful, everything you have joy, you have peace. Um, you have every fruit of the spirit. You have, oh man, just if you only knew, you are a son of God. You are an heir. You're going to inherit an inheritance of God. Believe it. If you don't know it, know it. And you need to know who you are. You need to. You need to. So you can enjoy God and enjoy the life you have in him. When you know you're a son of God, you're going to be boasting in that fact that you are Christ. You're going to boast. You're going to have confidence in him. Confidence in Christ alone. Because that's the only way you should... Only where only place you should place your confidence in is in him because look at all you have to gain all because of all he promised you they're yours praise the lord the glory that you will inherit is is christ is christ and it, it's his gift it's a father's gift to you amen so be thankful it's every reason to give thanks and and rejoice all right so this is a very long video and i'm sorry about that but i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and i want to pray that um you all grow in the knowledge of jesus christ just grow in, grow in the knowledge of jesus christ because when you do so you will understand who you are in him exactly who you are because the word tells you it word the word tells you and when you grasp your mind around that, you're going to be raising your head a little bit higher in those dark times, in those difficult times. You're going to think ahead, think above, fix your eyes above and say, Lord, I'm, that's where I'm going. There's so much in store for me. There's so much promise to me. I'm going to be, I'm going to wait on you, Lord. I can't do it without you. So, yeah. So just allow God to be resting, rest, rest, rest. Allow God to live his life through you. That's the best way to live this life. Amen. All right. I love you guys all so much. Take care. Bye.